What's up everybody? Welcome to the Amateur Coder channel. Today we got a new operating system, so let's set this bad boy up for some Flutter development. So first thing you need to do, you obviously need to go to flutter.io or flutter.dev, whatever. Go to documents, get started, and install. We're here for the macOS operating system. Download the zip file. You got two minutes. And then this is one of the big reasons why I got a Mac. This terminal is so much better than the Windows terminal. So we need to go to the folder that we want to save our Flutter package in. So mine's in the files and support. Once we're in here, just copy this, copy this one. And it should unzip right where you want it. Should you like access? Yes, of course. And then you wait for Flutter to finish installing. All right, so we're done. Flutter's installed, video over. Just kidding, we got some more to do. So then how do we work with this Flutter directory? So we can copy this code, paste it in, and then obviously we need to change this to our path. So slash users, and then me. Should have picked a smaller path. Support and Flutter, there we go. So now if we type in Flutter, it pops up. We can do Flutter doctor, I think. And Git would like to require, sure, install, agree. So there we go, Flutter commands work and everything, but we run into a problem. If we close this terminal, open a new one, we try to do Flutter again, we're going to have a problem. Nothing happens, there's no Flutter commands. That's because we need to update our environment path. So how do you do that? It's a little bit difficult, but we'll get it. So when you're, if you're in your root folder, which means you should see this little squiggly line thing, you can do ls and dash la will show you all the hidden files and everything. You should see a file called dot zshrc, or you will see a dot bash profile or dot bash brc. If you see one of these, then you've already done something with the terminal. If you don't, it's no problem. Then you do the command vim.zshrc or if you see a bash profile, if you're using a bash terminal, make sure you use the bash one. If you're using a zsh, you make sure you do this one. When you click it, it'll bring you to this type of window. Now in here, you put in the same command that we put in the normal terminal, but this is gonna save it for us. So then in here, we want to type out that path that we need. So export path equals path to users, whatever user you are. So there we go, that should be good. So not to save it, you gotta make sure you press escape first and then do semicolon WQ, which means write and quit, and click enter. And there we go. Hopefully it worked. If we close it now, and we open a new terminal, we should be able to type in flut, and then it'll finish for us. So there we go. Now we have our path updated everywhere, and no matter what terminal we open, we'll always be able to have access to our Flutter commands. So you saw we had two other issues, though, when we ran Flutter Doctor. Flutter Doctor, by the way, is what tells you what you need to install and how you need to install and everything gives you information make sure everything with your flutter package is okay so we have two problems so we have our android toolchain and our xcode installation isn't complete so problems we see here we need the android toolchain and we need xcode so let's install those two things next so we need android studio download agree and download and then also from the App Store, we will need to download Xcode. So you just search for Xcode, you get this, and install this. So wait for both of these to install, then go through the installation process, and then we'll be back. Only thing that's not completely straightforward is it might ask you for permissions, and it'll have this little line here show up where you need to allow it. So make sure you click this, use your password, whatever. And then I have a button here to click allow. That's for the Android Studio download. So once you see these two windows, it means you're probably done. If you run Flutter Doctor again, 
you should see that we still have some problems we need to solve. So first, Android licenses are not accepted. That's an easy one. We just copy paste this over here and run it and it's gonna ask us if we accept the licenses. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Yes, yes, yes. There we go. So run Flutter Doctor again. We should see a green check mark for the Android toolchain. Great. So Xcode, we need we need this thing called CocoaPods. CocoaPods is like a package installer for macOS. So we do that by doing sudo gem install CocoaPods. It pretty much tells you what you need to do all here. By the way, if you're not familiar with the terminal, sudo means you're letting the administrator, it's like getting admin rights for your commands. All right, let's run Flutter Doctor again. So the last two issues we see is the Flutter plugin is not installed and the Dart plugin is not installed. So that's pretty easy. Once you're at the Android Studio, go to Configure, Plugins, search for Flutter, or you don't even need to search one of the top ones. Just click Install, Accept, and it says the Flutter plugin requires a Dart plugin to be installed. Do you want to install that? Definitely. And Restart IDE. And then if we run Flutter Doctor here, we should hopefully see all green check marks except for, except for the last one. Perfect. Now we need to connect the device. That is super simple. You can just do open slash a emulator or simulator. And then there we go. It opens an iOS simulator. To get an Android one open too, it's just as easy. We can go to AVD Manager, create a virtual device. Let's say a Pixel 3, why not? And if you want this release, you have to download that. You can pick whichever version you want. Here's our iPhone SC, so everything's working. So there we go. We got Android R installed. Click Next. We'll just call it Pixel 3. Finish. Okay, so your virtual device is created. You can run it. So after I clicked that button, my audio stopped recording while I kept recording the rest of the video, but we're gonna recap what I did real quick. So after that, we saw I showed both emulators are working perfect. And you can obviously launch a project on either of the emulators. This is just the, the Flutter project you get when you start. So pick a device, iOS simulator. No, not the iPhone and run it. And there you go, you have Flutter set up with both an iOS simulator and an Android simulator. One more thing I wanted to show is a lot of people have been asking about VS Code and how all that works. VS Code is super simple, you just download from Mac, then once you download it, you'll get something like this. And all you have to do is go to Extensions and then download Flutter, which I already have downloaded and then it'll automatically download Dart for you as well. And then two things that I like to download on top of that is the pitch black theme, which makes my VS Code all black like this, and bracket pair colorizer. Those are my two favorite extensions. And this is what the color pair colorizer looks like, and then my theme is obviously all this completely black and then the colors. So that's it for this one. If you have any questions or anything, leave it in the comments. If this helped you, make sure to like, subscribe, and share, and thank you for watching.